Welcome on in to a live Cleveland Browns report. We are two weeks and change away from the NFL draft. Pat yourself on the back for being here right now. Getting yourself ready for the big day at the, or the big few days at the end of the month. We're going to run through all of the latest news and rumors surrounding the Cleveland Browns. And we have a really sh fun show, I'm going to say. I mean, not fun. Um, how about in-depth show? I really like that word choice instead. So a lot of fun stuff um, coming up on the live edition of the Cleveland Browns Report. But shout out your city for me. We love to get the audience engaged to begin the live show. And then we get into the meat and potatoes and the nuts and bolts of today's show. But get in the chat right now. Let me know where you are tuning in from. I'm giving shout outs to everyone that gets their city in the chat. As Jacob Kistner with a $2 super chat. Try my Stalin impression, Jeremy Stallman impression. Imagine it 200 minus the twos, uh, a couple zeros. Jacob, I appreciate you more than anything in the world. You're awesome. Thank you so much, buddy. Um, uh, he's a linebacker. Why? Oh, then no. He should not be changing his number. I don't know he had a number to begin with. Where did this come from? Oh, okay. Well, producer Trace just told me that the backup outside linebacker, backup at line, yeah, change his number. Last worn by Tanner McAllister. Okay. He was a safety on the team two seasons ago. All right. Maybe even as soon as last preseason? I don't remember. Um, Jacob Kistner, I've been uh, waiting to hear that message. All right. Let me give some shout outs right now, though. I said that. I want to deliver my promise. Ty Man is in Ohio. John's in Connecticut. Uh, Matthew uh, Matthew Hyam Matthew Hayam, uh, is from L.A. Bills in Boone, North Carolina. I got your boy Ham in Statesboro, Georgia. Jacob is in Toledo. Mir is in Gillette, Wyoming. Anthony, should I crack a glass of wine open tonight? I don't say I don't say no. Um, Austin's in Ohio. Anthony, red or white? I'm a, I'm, I'm not a big wine guy to be honest with you guys. I prefer white over red because it's just not as like intense. But I'm not a big wine guy to begin with. Um, Iron Mike's Camp in Hartville. Um, DC is in Cleveland. Austin's in Ohio. So, Jacob, with that $2 super chat, should we throw on the deal we're running for the biggest super chat, which right now would be Jacob Kistner at $2. Uh, we're trying something out here on the channel. We've never really done this before. But the biggest super chat, right, the single largest amount, you get to pick a future show topic. So if there is something that you want me to talk about, you want my opinion and analysis on, or you just want to bring it up for everyone to discuss, send in a super chat. The largest super chat we get, within reason, like, don't make me do rank the best porn accounts. That's not going to happen. But something football and Cleveland Browns related, and we can make that a show topic. So keep it PG-13. I'll toss the 13 in there, uh, but we're going to keep it at that. So biggest super chat. Right now it's $2 from Jacob Kistner, and you get to pick a future Cleveland Brown show topic. All right, with that all being said, another juicy rumor we're going to get to on the show is the latest on Brazil and whether or not the Browns will be going south of the uh, equator to open up the season. Doesn't look like it is, but we'll unpack it all in a moment. But just raw take right now. Did you want to play in Brazil? Door's not shut, but it's looking closed. Yes or no? I was, like, wishy-washy. I saw pros and cons for both sides. So, ultimately, it wasn't something that I had such a strong opinion on where if it did or didn't happen, I was going to be devastated. The Browns, they struggled going out west last year. Not so sure they're going to do a lot much better going all the way to the South American continent. But you would not have to go play the Eagles in Philadelphia. You would also have a mini buy ish like a day or two buy before week two. But you're likely going to be on the road week two because there's a concert at Cleveland Brown Stadium on Friday night. So you want back-to-back -back road games? Not crazy about that. So I went back and forth. I'm pretty, like, you know, at peace and happy, I think, with them not playing in Brazil week one. Give me a home opener. That's a lot more fun. Who says no? Uh, we got a $2 Super Chat, by the way, rolling in from your boy, Ham. Let's roll, your boy, Ham. 
Um, Petey, who's your favorite late round FCS prospect? That's a tough question. Uh, two, I do, I do have two names for you. Um, I have two names. One is, and this wasn't really late round, so it doesn't fit perfectly. But the Yale offensive tackle, uh, Karan Akemijo, Karan Akimaje. No, I, I got the last name wrong. I'm sorry. Uh, Karan Amaganji. That 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 that's it. I think. Uh, that's one, and. His name is escaping me, but it's the running back out of New Hampshire. Dylan Someone fact check me. D- thank you. Dylan Lowby. He is one of the best uh, dual threat and receiving backs. He's the best receiving back yeah, in the draft In class. the draft. Like, this kid is a freak of nature. He's so athletic and tested really, really well at the combine. Yeah. So those would be two names I would offer you, your boy, Ham. Thank you for the super chat. Is- you and Kister tied at uh, $2 for the largest super chat to pick a future Cleveland Browns report topic. JMU isn't an FCS school anymore, right? They're D1. James now, right? Madison yes. is D1. Okay. They're the Sun, they're in the Sun Belt. Yeah, I was going to say they're a Sun Belt team. That's right. Yeah. Uh, a, a guy to look out there is Jalen Green. He's an okay. edge rusher, 15 and a half sacks last year. Or, or yeah, double digit sacks, 15 and over 21 tackles for loss or something. Like, dude's a freak. Yeah. All right. Coming up on today's show, though, we got the latest news and rumors, and then a unique segment planned out for you all. What I did was I really sat down and did a deep dive on Andrew Barry's draft history. Because as someone who watches World War II in color every time my girlfriend's out of town, I love history, and I think it can point us in the direction of where the future is headed. And I think if we look back at Andrew Barry's past, we can get a good idea as to who we might be looking at in this year's draft. So I did the hard work for you, for you guys. And I'll give you the names that I came up with after my extensive research. So, with all that being said, we're going to get into today's show. Just 10 likes. That really is a big blow to my confidence. Not going to lie. Can we get to like 15 likes? Uh, I think that's at least better, right? It's a bigger number, but we still have a long ways to go from there. Um, Alexander, UConn beating Purdue wasn't an upset. I don't know who said it was an upset. I actually, not that anyone cares, like, afterwards... I called it nearly to the exact point. I said UConn was going to win by 16, and then won by 15. I My favorite was maybe you were the one with the take. It feels like it's the year of the repeat. Chiefs repeat, UConn repeats, Nuggets might repeat. Mm-hmm. Somebody gave me that take, and I was like, it's actually holding up to be pretty true so far. And that was before March Madness. Okay. Are we ready to – got 18 likes. There we go. Let's get into a live Cleveland Browns report starting right now. Welcome on in to the Cleveland Browns Report. we got some draft news to get to to open up the show, and then we're going to look at the latest rumors surrounding your Brownies. But Mike Garofolo tweeting out earlier this morning, Texas tight end Jatavion Sanders, viewed by many as tight end two in this month's draft, is visiting the Panthers and Browns over the next couple of days. An excellent vertical weapon per move the sticks. That's Daniel Jeremiah's uh, Twitter handle. Sanders is a likely second-round pick. So let's get to know Sanders for a moment, and then we'll talk about whether or not this would be a good or bad pick for the Browns, okay? Last year for Texas, 682 yards, two touchdowns. I know those aren't eye-popping numbers, but just think about who he had to share the ball with. Xavier Worthy, A.D. Mitchell, and an offense that goes to the wide receiver first, running back second, tight end third. So he had some pretty good production as a team's like fourth option, right? After Sand, after Mitchell and Worthy and Jonathan Brooks in the backfield. Uh, he's six foot four, two hundred and forty five pounds. Ran a four six forty yard dash. So from an athletic standpoint, it's a big body to throw to. He's got good speed. He was a two time first team All Big Twelve player. And I thought you guys might find this interesting. Lance Zerline from NFL Network. His player comp for Sanders was the Chiefs, David Njoku. So you want two David Njokus? I don't think that's a bad thing to have. Uh, When you look at the Browns' tight end room, though, I can see why Cleveland would be interested in going tight end because after Njoku, there's uh, not a lot of good depth there, right? I don't think Zaire mitchell Payton's going to make this roster. Sorry. Uh, Giovanni Ricci is a fullback at best. Uh, Jordan Akins didn't really show us a whole lot last year, and 
outside of the red zone, he does not provide you a whole lot of targets and production. So I have mixed feelings on this selection because on one hand, you are one injury away from Njoku going down and the Browns not having a very good tight end room behind him. So I think that is a spot where you could definitely add some depth. But if you get in the weeds and just nerd out with me for a moment, if you're going to go get a tight end around two, I would think you'd have a good plan in place to use him, right? I don't know if your first pick in the draft should be used on just a backup job because that's what he will be. If David Njoku plays all 17 games, he'll be the backup. And he'll continue being the backup for a long time because it's not like Njoku is pushing 32, 33 years old. So if you draft Sanders, then I would believe you have a plan in place to change your offense from last year to this year to use more two tight end sets. Allow me to demonstrate. Last year, the Browns ranked 11th in 11 personnel. 11 personnel means one running back, one tight end, and everyone else is a wide receiver. So in this case, three wide receivers, right? Uh, 12 personnel is one running back, two tight ends, okay? The Browns in two tight end sets, two tight end sets ranked 28th in the NFL last year. Now, they didn't have a great second option because Harrison Bryant I think after that Steelers game, just never really found his way out of the doghouse. But I want to share that and compare it to the Buffalo Bills because Ken Dorsey comes over from Buffalo where he had two good tight ends last year, Dawson Knox and Dalton Kincaid. So with two receiving threats at that position, you can see that the Bills in 12 personnel, they ranked 17th. Nearly one out of every five plays had two tight ends on the field, more than double than what the Browns had. Now, go back a year prior, 2022, and you can see that this is actually very different because in 2022, the Browns, they used more 12 personnel, right? They were much more open to Njoku and Harrison Bryant being on the field, whereas the Buffalo Bills, they were dead last in the league in 12 personnel, one running back, two tight ends. So what changed for them to go from dead last to middle of the pack? Well, they drafted Dalton Kincaid. So Ken Dorsey showed us that he'll lean into his personnel. He's not going to try and fit a circle in a triangle. If he's got good two tight ends, that's he'll use both tight ends. So the next step here is if you go get another tight end, what kind of role does Ken Dorsey have in shaping this offense? Is it Ken Dorsey's play calling? And if so, I'm sure we're going to see a lot of two tight end sets. And maybe that's what this is a sign of, of, The Browns are going, all right, Dorsey, you had a lot of success last year with two tight ends. Do you want to have two tight ends this year? Because we like Sanders as a player, but we want to make sure before we draft him, there's a good plan in place for him to be incorporated into the offense. So if you trade for two wide receivers, which the Browns have done the last two offseasons in Elijah Moore and Jerry Judy, and then you go draft a tight end to, I would assume, have more two tight end sets, You can only have 11 guys on the field. Five are offensive linemen. One's a quarterback. So that leaves you with five open spots. And it's tough to have three wide receivers, two tight ends, uh uh-oh, and a running back. You're going to have too many men in the huddle called very often on you. So to me, it doesn't seem like this is a great fit for the Browns because why trade for Elijah Moore and Jerry Judy just to – Put one of them on the bench because you drafted Sanders and you want to use more two tight end sets. Or why draft Sanders if he's going to sit on the bench? To me, I just don't really think that from a X's and O's in the weeds uh, standpoint, it's a perfect fit, right? There's definitely going to be opportunities to incorporate two tight end sets and not have more and Judy on the field because they don't have to play 100% of the snaps. But I just don't think this is something the Browns are going to be going towards offensively with the way Andrew Barry constructed this roster. Now, before we get to the rest of our rumors here, if you want more NFL draft analysis, make sure to subscribe to the channel. We are less than 50 subs away from reaching 34,000 subscribers, so please help us reach that milestone. I want to get there before the NFL draft, and then I want to get to 35,000, hopefully after the draft. I know, ambitious, but there's going to be a lot of... uh, views coming in throughout the draft weekend, so make sure to subscribe if you haven't already. 
Now let's get into some rumors. Are the Browns not playing in Brazil? I'm going to give this three Bernie heads. I don't think it's a completely shut door case, but it's like 3.9 Bernie heads. I'm just not going to cut Bernie Kosar's face into nine tenths. And I'll tell you why in just a second. But first, I got to tell you all about our wonderful sponsor today, which is Game Time. Spring is here, which means we've got Guardians baseball, playoff basketballs around the corner, and then we've got hockey, summer concerts. There's a lot of fun to be had over the next few months. And I don't want you to miss any of it because of ticket prices. But if you download the Game Time app, the number one spot to get tickets, well, you can get $20 off your first purchase when you use code chat sports. Now I put that information in the comments and description of today's video to help you guys out. But let's be honest, there is nothing worse than going through 30 minutes of legwork finding tickets just to see that it's double the price because of fees and taxes. But game time actually will show you the all in price right from the home screen. So you don't get your hopes up just to see that it's nowhere near the actual price on the sticker. So download the Game Time app today, create an account, and use code CHATSPORTS for $20 off your first purchase. Terms apply, but again, create an account and redeem code CHAT SPORTS for $20 off for those of you that don't know how to spell chat sports. Download Game Time today, last minute tickets, lowest price guaranteed. So going back to the Browns not, not playing in Brazil, three Bernie heads. Uh, Packers beat reporter Rob Domofsky tweeted out, based on Packers president Mark Murphy's comments this morning, it sounds like they are preparing to open the season in Brazil against the Eagles. Speaking before the annual tailgate tour departed, Murphy said we're either the first or second most popular team in Brazil. So I don't know if he kind of let the cat out of the bag a little bit. If he knows, I don't know why the whole NFL can't know. Why does the, the Packers president need to know this information for an extra week? right? Why not just have everyone be on the same page about it? But to me, it does seem like it's going to be the Green Bay Packers facing off against the Philadelphia Eagles in Sao Paulo on that Friday of NFL Week 1. And I don't want to say I told you so, but I'll, I'll take a minor victory lap. Uh, go back in time to like a month and a half ago, two months ago, whenever the announcement was that the Browns are going to be in contention to play against the Eagles in Brazil, my initial prediction was, I think it's going to be the Packers. So it's looking, le looking like that way. And honestly, I'm not losing sleep over this. Um, I went through the pros and cons on previous videos of playing in Brazil. Like pro, if you play on a Friday, you won't play again until the next Sunday. You kind of have a mini buy compared to your opponent that is playing on Sunday. Con, you have to go travel to Brazil. Like, that could be a problem, right? That may not bring out the best football, and you probably want to start the season on the right foot. Um, hopefully, this just means the Browns are home NFL week one, nice home opener in front of the dog pound, uh, likely going to be on the road week two. So, Con, you probably would have had back-to-back -back road games. That would have been a bummer. So, either way, I was either going to be on board or – quickly okay with them not playing in it because I, I don't have a strong opinion as to the Cleveland Browns success in 2024 is rooted in opening up the season in Sao Paulo. Would it have been cool from a national standpoint? Yeah, of course. Did the Browns do very well last year under the national spotlight? Not really. So maybe don't have Deshaun Watson open up the season on Peacock 7.30 p.m. How about he plays at noon, 1, 1 p.m. Eastern on Sunday? It's probably going to get a better overall result. Wouldn't you agree? So did you want to play in Brazil? Type Y for yes, type N for no. Keep it short and sweet for me in the comment section. We haven't gotten a lot of comments on our videos lately. I don't want to sound like thirsty or desperate, but I do really enjoy reading your guys' comments and seeing what you guys have to say. So don't be a stranger. Pop on down, drop a comment. Next rumor up on the show, are the Browns going offensive tackle on day two? I'm going to give this to Bernie Head. It could be graduated to three, but for now, I'm going to keep it at two. So the reason why we're talking about this is because um, Jack Duffin, who does an excellent job of following the team, uh, kind of keeping up with the cap and whatnot, which is an absolute enigma, uh, he tweeted this out, and it kind of got uh, the gears turning in my head. If the Browns don't draft a tackle this year, 
the chances they extend Wills go up significantly. Chill the hype around running back, defensive line, and linebacker at 54. Keep mocking those tackles high. So I saw that, but like, you know, that's just one guy's opinion. It's not the gospel. Uh, then the ClevelandBrowns.com website, uh, the, the Browns themselves, which it always kind of blows my mind that the team will put out mock drafts. Like, you're the fucking team. Shouldn't you just know what you're doing? Um, they had some of their staff writers put out their projection, their proje- oh, predictions for pick 85 in round three. And both of them had going offensive tackle. So maybe when there's smoke, there's fire in this case. So let's kind of get to know these two prospects here for a moment. Starting with the Mizzou left tackle, Javon Foster, six foot five, 313 pounds, a massive human being. That's what you want at your offensive tackle spot. Plenty of experience. Started 39 games at left tackle, two games at right tackle. So usually in college football, teams place their best tackle on the left side of the offensive line because they want to keep their quarterback healthy. So that definitely says a whole lot about Foster. If Mizzou, for three seasons, put him at left tackle even before he was a senior. Uh, Two-time team captain, 2023 third-team AP All-American and first-team All-ACC. So plenty of awards surrounding him on his mantle. (coughs) Sorry, had to cough. Um, (coughs) This is not making good radio. But I think uh, from an experience standpoint, definitely checks out as someone the Browns may want to get after. I got to cough really badly. (coughs) Yeah. (coughs) Oh, boy. I'm just feeling a little under the weather. Okay, here we go. Ready to pick this thing back up? The next tackle we're going to talk about here is Karan Amaganji. So several insiders have him pegged as this year's, like, sleeper, right? Played in the Ivy League, so didn't go up against the best competition. There's not going to be a lot of eyeballs on him. But he started at left tackle the last two seasons after beginning his career at guard. He didn't even start playing football until much later in high school. Sorry. Uh, now, he unfortunately suffered a torn quad after four games into 2023, so there was maybe a little bit of medical concerns and lack of film from last season, but he's definitely someone to keep an eye on. Um, we'll see how they view Jed Wills. So I got something in my eye, and this has just been a disaster of an end of a video for me. Um, if the Browns don't view Jed Wills as someone long-term for them, then maybe they go out and draft a replacement this year. And both those guys have experience at left tackle. If the folks in Berea do think Jed Wills is a candidate to receive a second contract from the team, then I don't see them prioritizing tackle. But there's so many good tackles in this draft class, wouldn't put it past them to think, let's go start preparing for a new left tackle if we don't see Jed Wills getting a second contract from us. So should the Browns draft an offensive tackle? D for draft, P for pass. What do you think? I mean, I don't think many of us thought they were going to go to Dewan Jones last year, and I think that was simply a value pick of, like, the Browns had Dewan Jones as a third-round grade. He was there in round four. Couldn't pass on that. I could see that situation happening again. I don't think they're going to reach for a tackle. They're like, we got this guy's a round four guy, but we really want to tackle. Let's take him at pick 85. Okay, to wrap up the show, Let's bring on Trizzy Trace. Trace, which card do you want to go with? Um, I'm going to go with the Six of Spades. Six of Spades? Yes. I'm going to go with the, I don't know. Get eight, your comments in, too. What do y'all think it's going to be? Eight, I like that. Good, good plug, dude. Oh, yeah. Eight of Diamonds. All right, you ready? Ten of Clubs. Oh. Ten of Clubs. All right. That will do it for us on this edition of the Cleveland Browns Report. Sorry for kind of the rough landing at the end. Kind of been battling a cold, needed a cough, and I mean, I started watering, and I just looked like a zombie on screen. So we'll sign off. I'll take some use next, and I'll see you guys later. No free ad left. Oh, my gosh. That was <coughs> – I am very sorry, everyone. No, I, I, I filled up my water cup, so I hope I'm good. I, I'll be honest with you guys. If uh, when you're battling like a little bit like a cold, it's not, I'm not, you know, I'm a deathbed here, cold or cough, 
and the lights of the studio beaming on you, it just magnifies everything. Here's the thing. Tinfoil hat time. It was the eclipse. Messed with the weather. Messed with the temperature. Now yeah. we're feeling the effects. Yeah. Okay. Just kidding. <laughs> oh, boy. All right. Um, so we have a fun deal we're running today, which is biggest super chat gets to pick a future show topic. So far, the biggest super chat we got is $2. So $5 super chat, you'd be the leader of the pack. And we can talk about whatever show you want to talk about, right? Whether it's something related to the draft, free agency, the current roster. If you've got like a topic you really want to see some you know, time being devoted into, send in the largest super chat today, and we'll run with whatever Browns topic there is. PG-13, don't get wild. Um, okay, so are we ready to uh, jump on into our second segment today? I'm excited. This is a segment that I put some time into. Okay. <clears throat> Hopefully I can make it through it. <laughs> oh, I think I'm ready. I'm probably as ready as I'm ever going to be. Um, here we go. We're going to talk about, sorry, uh, Andrew Barry's guys. doesn't really make sense just by those three words alone, but I think you'll understand what the nature of this next segment is very quickly into it. We've got a really unique show planned out for you guys today. It's a show that I spent a lot of time preparing and researching for, so I really hope you enjoy it. And it's all about Andrew Barry's guys, right? Players that, based on Andrew Barry's draft history, would indicate who in this year's draft he may be interested in. Now, I saw a, a photo tweeted out from Jack Duffin, great Twitter follower for the Browns, and he highlighted... Every Andrew Barry draft pick, their week one age and their RAS score, right? Their relative athletic score. So with that in mind, I looked back at the week one age and the RAS score for Andrew Barry's first, second, third, and fourth round draft picks. I kind of stopped there for the sake of time. And I wanted to see, based on who we went after before, who in this year's draft would kind of fall under that same umbrella. So here are the first and second round picks. And, I mean, ignore the first rounders because that's not in play for this year. But when you look at second round picks here, like JOK, 21 years old, Grant Delpit, 20, all of them were 21 years old, start week one of their NFL career. So Andrew Barry definitely has a type, right? He's a bit of a Leonardo DiCaprio when it comes to players, if you know what I mean. Um, fast forwarding here, you can look at his third and third round picks. Are we noticing a trend, anyone? Only one guy here is over the age of 22, Cedric Tillman from last season. And then as for their athletic score, vast majority, at least a 7, if not almost a 7, right? Anthony Schwartz, a nice 6.9. Ika's like the major outlier here, 2.7 RAS. RAS, by the way, I probably should have mentioned, is a like measuring tool, kind of like kind of like OPS in baseball, where it takes your height, your size, your weight, your bench, your speed, and it gives you a score of 1 to 10 so you can compare different players to know, well, that guy's faster, but he's also much smaller, so how do I know who's really the better athlete? RIS tries to accomplish that with one number, 1 through 10. Uh, moving along here, looking at his fourth round picks now. Again, all of them, 22 years old, NFL Week 1. Uh, most of them have a good RAS score, but we are in round four, which means, well, if you're in round four, the best athletes are most likely gone, right? That's kind of why they're available in round four of the draft. So taking a step back here, seven out of the 19 players, Cade York also part of that, but he has no RAS score, and he's a kicker, so who cares? Um, seven out of the 19, though, were 21 years or younger, so nearly 36%. Uh, 18 out of the 19, though. So all but one. Cedric Tillman being the only outlier were 22 years or younger. So you can definitely say that Andrew Barry, whether he wants to admit it or not, there is a bit of a line in the sand when it comes to will you be 22 or younger on NFL Week 1? You're in. If not, you're out. It's like the one Curb Your Enthusiasm episode where Larry David notices ugly people on one side of the restaurant, hotties on the other. 
Andrew Barry doing that with age. Uh, when it comes to RAS score, it's not as uh, you know concrete as the age. Fifty percent of the players in rounds one through four had an RAS, RAS score of eight point zero or higher. So one out of every two, it's not a absolute must for him. And I think that's more just a product of there aren't a ton of great athletes when you get to later stages in the draft. The best athletes are gone at that point. So Andrew Barry doesn't have a choice. But this does give us, I think, a really good starting off point of if you're going to look at this year's draft class, let's look at guys that are 22 or younger, and let's start at 8.0 RAS score because that's what a majority of them were for at least rounds two and three, and that's the rounds all of us are most interested in for this year's draft. Now, before we start looking at those potential prospects, grade Andrew Barry as a drafter for me. A, B, C, D, or F. He just hasn't picked enough early selections to really give him an A grade, and that's a part of him, you know, wheeling and dealing and trading picks all the time. So for me, I'd give Andrew Barry a B to B minus drafter. Like, he's got some great picks like Martin Emerson and Dewan Jones, and you know, some not-so-great picks like Anthony Schwartz and David Bell right about now. So I think that B to B minus range is uh, pretty fair for A, B. So let's get into it. We're going to go kind of position group by position group that applies to the Browns. And I also ruled out some names that just are not going to be available for Cleveland at pick 54, like the top defensive tackle Byron Murphy, for example. But these guys are definitely in play for the Browns all the way from round two to round four. So these are the four defensive tackles that, through my research, satisfy the two needs for the Browns. 22 or younger, and an RAS score of at least 8, but I'll toss in Leonard Taylor at 7.2. In fact, we can just slide it back to 7, because when you get to round 4, it's really tough to find guys with an RAS score of over 8. So 22, and we'll say at least a 7 on the RAS. Of these four players right here, the guy I like the most is probably Mason Smith out of LSU. Last year for the Tigers, 28 tackles, 4.5 tackles for loss, 2.5 sacks, and 23 pressures. He's six foot five, 306 pounds. So I don't think he's an absolute nose tackle in the NFL. He may be a three technique or a little bit on the shade side of things, but former five-star recruit, you know Andrew Barry is always looking for skill. He really values that in free agency and then the draft as well. He started 12 games in 2023. He also was the starting defensive tackle in 2021. Hurt his knee in the first quarter against the um, Seminoles. Remember the LSU-Florida State game, like the mixed extra, mixed extra point at the end? Uh, he missed the rest of the season. So he would have been a two-year starter. And I think because he missed 2022, he's kind of slipping down the draft boards a little bit. And that may be somewhere Andrew Barry pounces. Now, the Browns' need at defensive tackle is not dire. Like They went in free agency and brought back Shelby, Hurst and Mo Hurst, or Shelby Harris and Moe Hurst. They signed Quinn Jefferson. They have Siaka Ika, third-round pick from last year, and Dalvin Tomlinson still a starting DT. So I think this would only be in play if there was like a Dewan Jones situation where the Browns feel like this guy's just, just too good to be available at this point. We just can't move on without him. Moving on here, let's talk linebackers. This is, in my opinion, one of the biggest needs for the Browns. Um, there are five linebackers that I identified as age and RAS. Trevin Wallace from Kentucky, the most athletic, you could say, of the bunch. My guy, Adrian Cooper, afterwards, 9.122 age. Uh, Curtis Jacobs from Penn State. Jalen Ford from Texas. And Cedric Gray. Now, it's uh, no secret that I think I should probably give up 1% of Edron Cooper's uh, signing bonus if he gets drafted by the Browns for the propaganda work I've been doing to get this guy to Cleveland. He's my favorite linebacker in the entire NFL draft class, and I think it's going to work out in the Browns' favor that there's going to be a big run on wide receivers before the Browns at 54, and maybe Edron Cooper slips all the way to them, kind of like how JOK slipped to round two a few years ago when Looking back, if they did a redraft, he'd go a lot earlier than where he ended up going. Now, the other name on the list there was Wallace, someone I could see the Browns having interest in because he's got a great physical makeup, 80 tackles last season for a big blue nation, 8.5 tackles for loss, and 5.5 and sacks. I think he would be a round 3 or round 4 pick for the Browns if they decide not to go linebacker in round number 2. Now, before we get on to the rest of the prospects that Andrew Barry 
may have a crush on. I do want to tell everyone about our sponsor today, which is Prize Picks. That is daily fantasy made easy, where all you have to do is pick two to six players and then choose more or less on their projected stats. So the way Prize Picks works is you're going to hop on the app. You're going to look through all the NBA, NHL, any sports you want, all the stat projections listed. And then whichever ones you like the most or dislike, simply choose more or less. So let me show you the projections and the uh, selections I'm rolling with for NFL season totals. Taking the more on Jerry Judy's receiving yards, 725. I feel like the Browns have a big plan for him in their offense this season and he's gotten over 725 yards before in worst offenses, so I really like the more on that one. Take the more on Miles Garrett, 13.75 sacks. That's just me trying to get good mojo into the universe. And then I'm going to take the less on T.J. Watt. He's going to have a hissy fit for losing out on NFL Defensive Player of the Year. I see a regression year coming. So if you like these selections, you can ride with me. You can make your own. Whatever it is, just make sure you download the Prize Picks app and use code CLNS for a first time deposit match up to $100. I put that link in the comments and description of today's video. Prize picks. Pick more, pick less. It's that easy. Okay, moving on here. Let's talk about the tight ends next as we get to the offensive side of the football here because I could see the Browns going tight end. They brought in the Texas tight end for a visit. And I included him on the list because at least the Browns have some level of interest in him. But I'll be honest, it was tough to find tight ends out after Brock Bowers because he's not going to be available at pick 54 that meet the criteria, right? There's really only two. It's the Illinois tight end, Tip Raymond, all-time name, and the Kent State tight end slash maybe fullback, Ben Sinat. And then I put on Sanders, but you can see that not all the picks the Browns made have always been above a 7 or an 8 RAS, but 5.6 definitely on the lower end. Um, so I don't think we're going to see the Browns make an early push at tight end, but maybe because there is such a drop-off in the tight end draft class after the first two guys, they decide the best option we have is getting Sanders. However, if he goes before the Browns, maybe they circle back on this and they go with the K-State tight end Ben Sinat. Uh, last year for the Wildcats, 676 yards, six touchdowns. He was a walk-on, incredible story, worked his way up the depth chart, found a spot on the field, and he never went off the field. Now, I know 676 yards does not jump out to you. It's like, that's going to make one hell of an NFL tight end. But do keep in mind, college football this day and age is not designed to benefit the tight end. The passes are out quickly, they go to wide receivers, or they run the football. Tight ends are just not a major focal point of almost any team's uh, really offensive makeup. Moving on here to the running back spot now. I only found three running backs that fit the bill. Jalen Wright, Trey Benson, Will Shipley. Blake Corum was too old. Again, this is all under the assumption that Brown's 22 or younger. That's not always the case, but for the sake of today's video, that's what we're looking at here. So of the three running backs that fit the mold for Andrew Barry's guys, I mean, my favorite's Jalen Wright. Uh, he, he's the best of all three. I, I don't think that's really all that hot of a take to say. He had only 137 carries last year and got to 1,000 yards. He averaged 7.4 yards a carry. I mean, if you gave Jalen Wright the amount of touches that Blake Corum had last season at Michigan, oh, how different the conversations would be about Wright in this year's draft. I also do like Trey Benson. Uh, last year for the Florida State Seminoles, 156 carries, 906 yards. That's an average of 5.8 yards a carry, 15 total touchdowns. He did suffer a knee injury in college, so that's something to weigh in a little bit, but so did Nick Chubb, and he turned out okay. Uh, the last running back, I feel like he's actually going to have a pretty decent NFL career. It's Will Shipley, and this just comes from the standpoint of after watching him at Clemson for so many years, it felt like, he just looks like a good football player. He's a good receiving back. He picks up blocks well. He can run the ball in any direction you really need to. He may not stand out physically at any one point, but if you felt like Clemson football was to drag the last few seasons, because it has been, but there's only one right, uh, bright spot, it was the, you know, the Toby Gerhardt in the backfield. It was Will Shipley. So I'm not opposed to Shipley, maybe in day three of the draft. Uh, 
maybe the Browns feel like he could be a good receiving back for them. But if you were to pick a running back to draft in this year's NFL draft, who would it be? Let me know in the comment section below. Moving on to the wide receivers now. Only six, only six made the cutoff. You got Lad McConkey, who I don't think is going to be there at 54, but if he is, that could be tempting. Troy Franklin, Jalen Polk, Jalen Mc, Jalen McMillan, McMillan, excuse me, uh, Western Kentucky's Malachi Corley, and then Jerry Rice's son, Brendan Rice. So of the six here, I think the most plausible and my favorite would be Malachi Corley. I think you could get him in round three. I think teams are going to probably look overlook him a little bit because he did not go to a Power 5 school. So when you look at 985 yards for Western Kentucky, you also think about the kind of DBs he was going up against. And teams that don't do their research on him may kind of gloss over him. Plus, if they do do their research, they're going to come away with, oh, he's a one-trick pony, he's a yak monster. But that's because he was running over Conference USA DBs. That's not going to work in the NFL. I don't know, Jim. I really like Malachi Corley, and I think he fits what the Browns are missing from their wide receiver room. Yards after catch monster. And I expect a run of wide receivers to open up round two of the draft, and that's going to work well for the Browns. If they don't want to go wide receiver, great. Let every team in front of them pick a position the Browns are not looking for. That way, when 54 does come around, they've got much better selections at the positions they are looking for because the 10 teams in front of them were not all picking the positions the Browns were hoping to be available when their turn came about. So, with that being said, who is the most underrated draft prospect? Who is the guy that you're willing to stand up for and go, people need to talk about him in a much more serious manner? For me, this isn't like a blazing hot take here, but I'll go with some action here. Give me Quinion Mitchell. They, just First off, the direction the NFL is headed offensively you have to recognize because that should influence the way you prepare defensively. And offensively, you're seeing a lot of 11 personnel. One running back, one tight end, three wide receivers. So that requires defenses to have three good corners. we got to stop thinking prehistoric about you only need two corners in the NFL. You need three. And Quinion Mitchell, he can play inside. He can play outside. He's a Swiss Army knife. He's a great tackler. I, I think he's going to have a really good NFL career. I think he's going to go round one, probably top 20. But when we do a redraft in three or four years, I think he's going to go earlier in that redraft than where he goes this year. Trizzy Trace, let's bring you on board to wrap up the show. Favorite part of the day. Did Favorite you, did, part. Did you like the show? I, I, I'm not, no, I didn't like it. I loved it. I loved the show. I thought it was awesome. But in terms of my card that I'm rolling with, I'm liking the eight of diamonds, but this is your chance to comment below as well. Um, I'm going to go with the King of Spades. I like it. I like it. All right, you ready? Let's see it. What would you say? Eight of diamonds? No, not close at all. <laughs> Six of spades. Six of spades. Oh, that was my last one. <laughs> was it really? I think it was. Oh, that's a bummer. Uh, that will do it for us. Uh, thank you guys so much for tuning in. We're going to sign off, and I'll be sure to catch up with everyone later. All right. Oh. Let's see. Did anyone get it right? Brody said six of clubs. Oh. Scott gets a NyQuil. Thank you, Scott. <laughs> you know, like, I, I, I pride myself on not being like a habitual sick guy. I, I like the same. But um, when it gets you, it gets dude, you. Dude, the last, like it happened to me in February, if you guys remember. I was on a bachelor party. Had to, there's no worse feeling than like sitting at a bar in Fort Lauderdale, and music's blaring, and all I want to do is put lead in my head because I am so sick. Yes. And I'm like, I got to leave the bar early at 1045. Yep. Everyone went to the casino, and the bachelor, by the way, like low key and at gambling addict, mm -hmm. like can't touch the game anymore. Don't don't let him touch And it. even he wanted to go. <laughs> and I was like, I should have been there to be a much greater bad influence on this situation. Exactly. Uh, I woke up in the morning so upset. But the um, wife was probably happy that you didn't let that happen. Yeah. Or that you were at least weren't there to feed the bad ideas. I was I would have fed a lot into those bad ideas. Uh Josh, I'm still on the Isaac Garendo train. I do like Garendo. Um 
I can see how people could get hurt by Garendo. So Isaac Garendo is the Louisville running back. He was the backup in Madison, Wisconsin for a few years. Never really broke through there. Transfers to Louisville. He's the fastest guy in college football. He was a big play machine. Um, he doesn't have a lot of like wear and tear because he only really started one year. So he doesn't come in with like a, oh, he already has knee injuries, right? Um, but when you only play one season, it's kind of really know what you have in a player. So I wouldn't reach too early on him because that's when you can look back at and go, what the fuck were you thinking? <laughs> but that's also when you can look back at and go like, how was he available in round five? Well, it's because he only played one season of college football, really, and teams were just going to go a different direction every time. Okay. Um, we got a mailbag coming up next. Got to get some more questions in. Joshua Miller is going to sponsor today's mailbag. Um, okay, little beam. So pepper those questions in. Hashtag Browns or Super Chat. We've gotten two Super Chats so far. And reminder, the biggest Super Chat today gets to pick a future show topic. Right now, that um, is being tie, yeah, for lack of a better term, between Jacob Kistner and your boy Ham. So either one of them needs to send a $2 suit. Well, somebody needs to break the tie because – it's America. We do not stand for ties. Uh, so get those uh, hashtag Browns in or Super Chat, and you can skip the line of your Super Chat, and if you send a $5 Super Chat in, you'd be in the driver's seat to pick a future show topic for the Cleveland Browns report. Um, Tim Green, good to see you in the chat. It's always great to see familiar faces. I've got Brody in the chat. Jackson Finley's here. Jackson, week one, not in Brazil. It sounded like a bit of a question. Hashtag Browns at the end of it, and then our software can pull it, and we'll throw it on screen. Okay, so we'll give you guys another moment or two. So, Jason, would you take Keon Coleman if still there at 54? Great question. Please put hashtag Browns at the end of it, because our software cannot pull it. Uh, your boy Ham PD, I legit had the flu two weeks ago, and I am just now getting better. You're a trooper. I appreciate it. I don't think I could categorize myself as a flu survivor right now. Going through a bit of a cold. The worst is I'm a bad allergy guy. A little head cold. So like a little. It's not even like. Just more my my like uh, chest 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 yeah. cold. Yeah. Um, I I get bad allergies. And I when too. it first started, everyone's like I was like allergies. I'm not sick. No, and then I'm like I'm I don't the think same it's fucking way. allergies. I'm the same way. And right now it's a bad time in Texas because it's just pollen everywhere. Yeah. Okay. So keep getting those questions in. And then we will jump on into a live Cleveland Browns report. Okay. I was just checking something out. All right, here we go. Um, we got some questions in right now from Jason, from Jackson. One last reminder, I know I'm sounding super repetitive, but if you super chat, you skip the line, guarantee a spot on screen. And the biggest super chat today gets to pick a future show topic. So it's kind of like... I don't know, a win-win. Or in the, in the school of Michael Scott, a win-win-win. This one, option number five, we all win. You win, you win, and I win. I like that option. It's a win-win-win. That's yes. the best situation for everyone. <laughs> Oscar will wear the... <laughs> Oscar, Oscar will wear, wear the, the baby poster. Baby poster. That way he does not see it, and Angela looks at it all day, and we win. Win-win-win. Win-win-win. I love it. All timer. <laughs> Getting things done. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go to our next problem. <laughs> Let's get this suggestion. Why does box Michael out? <laughs> have bad coffee breath in the morning? Okay. <laughs> All right. Uh, here we go. Let's uh, let's get into a live mailbag. Welcome on into a live Cleveland Browns report mailbag edition. As today's episode was filmed during Tuesday's live show, airs at 5 p.m. Eastern. First question coming in from Derek Huff. Um, what would it take for the Browns to trade into round one? Saw this question ahead of time, so figured I'd do a little bit of homework for you, Mr. Derek Huff. Um, if you truly want to know, like, from a mathematical standpoint, this is the formula, okay? The NFL trade value chart, where every single pick in the draft is assigned a number value. So if you want to get to pick 32, the Chiefs, you need to come up with 590 draft points, Okay. If you combine the Browns' second and third round pick, 
you would have 525 draft dollars. Um, that's a little bit short. Now, this is not an exact science, so it's just a, a measuring stick. And usually the 32nd overall pick can sell for a bit high because whoever's trading up, well, the team trading back knows that that team really wants to trade up because they really just want that fifth-year option of availability. So for the Browns to trade up, I think it would cost their second this year and probably next year's second and a day three draft pick, something I just don't see the Browns doing unless someone they really love falls they just did not see in a world being available that late in round number one. So I would be shocked, to be honest with you, if the Browns found themselves making a pick in round one this year. But would you trade up, or would you trade a player, I should add, to move up in the draft? Yes or no? Chime in for me down in the comment section. It's a pinned comment. So scroll on down and let me know. A uh, quick super chat coming in from your boy Ham. Thank you very much. Uh, Jacob Kistner, someone had to break a tie and someone has to try to pick up that Jeremy Stallman energy. And because Mystery Mail came, uh, can make someone's month. Thanks, Jeremy and Petey. Jacob, we'll circle back to this one later. Uh, Jackson Finley, next one up. What's the rumors around Justin Simmons? Uh, how much do you trust Antonio Brown? Because he's reporting that Justin Simmons will be a Pittsburgh Steeler. Um, I think he also said Stephon Diggs was going to go to Houston. So maybe he's got some connections with the player side of things here. But as we film on Tuesday right now, Justin Simmons is still a free agent. He's a really good safety. I sure hope the Steelers don't sign him because he'll make them a better football team. He's the NFL interceptions leader since he entered the league in 2016. So for all of our sake, I hope he does not sign in the AFC North and hopefully somewhere in the NFC. Joshua Miller, confidence level of the new offensive coaching staff. I like Ken Dorsey. Kind of excited about the Tommy Reese edition, just kind of bringing some young minds. And I think that also kind of just goes to show from a general football standpoint, coaches, I think, in college are just so fed up and tired of NIL and the transfer portal. Like, it just makes their job 10 times harder because they're constantly working to keep the guys they have on their team, on their roster, and to go and get new players in the portal. So I could see why Tommy Reese was willing to kind of leave college football and join the NFL ranks. Mike Vrabel, of course, not on the offensive coaching staff, but just having him on the sidelines with Jim Schwartz, very excited. So confidence level, 1 to 10, 7.4, 7.4. Little Beam, if the Browns take Edron Cooper at 54, who should they take? I think they should take uh, Cade Stover or Karan Amaganje. Who do you think they should take? I think you're asking in round number three who they should take. Uh, if they go Edron Cooper at pick 54, I think it's a little early for both of those players, if I'm being honest with you. In round three, I would love if Malachi Corley was still available. And I know I'm kind of a broken record, and my dream draft that's somewhat realistic for the Browns is Cooper in round two, Corley in round three. If Corley is gone in round three, um, maybe a wide receiver like Jalen Polk. Well, I don't think a wide receiver is going to be that big of a need for them as you might think it is. So... Offensive tackle could definitely uh, be in play at that point, and Karana Maganje could be someone to keep an eye on. Uh, Jason Reunion, Run, Runyon, Runyon, uh, would you take Keon Coleman if still there at 54? I personally am not like super high on Keon Coleman. If you don't know who that is, it's the Florida State wide receiver. He's about like six foot three, 215 pounds. He is a red zone threat. Uh, he's a jump ball guy. Uh, people say he kind of say lives above the rim type of player. And when I think about the Browns' wide receiver room, are they looking for one of those types of players? They've got Amari Cooper and David and Joku, who are really good at that role in the red zone, more so in Joku than Cooper. So, sure, I think they could stand to add a red zone guy, but that's Cedric Tillman. Like, that's what they need Cedric Tillman to develop into. And I think if we just try to replace guys after one season, we're just going to be going nowhere every single year. So I would be surprised if Keon Coleman is there, but even if he's projected to go a lot earlier, I don't think it's a good fit for the Browns. So actually, unpopular opinion maybe, I would pass on Keon, Col Keon Coleman at pick 54, and I'm sure someone's going to clip that in three years, and it will come to haunt me. Now, before we get on to the other questions on today's mailbag, 
Today's show is made possible thanks to our friends over at Game Time. Download the Game Time app today and use code 20, uh, use code Chat Sports for twenty dollars off. Now, what is Game Time? Well, it's the best place to get last minute seats. Don't worry about the ticket price because at Game Time they're going to have the lowest price guaranteed, and they give you an all in option on the home page. So you know up front what the sticker price truly is. So make sure to download the Game Time app today and use that code Chat Sports to get twenty dollars off. A feature I love about Game Time is you can get a view of your seats before you download before you purchase the tickets. So that way you don't show up and you're shocked to see what the actual uh, view is, and you're not sitting behind some big beam or something like that. So make sure you download the app. Use this code on screen, Chat Sports, for $20 off. It's the best place to find last minute seats. Download the Game Time app, create an account, and redeem code Chat Sports, C H A T Sports, for $20 off. Download Game Time today. Last minute tickets, lowest price guaranteed. I put all that information in the comments and description of today's video. Joshua Miller. Will Cade York get into a regular season game this year? I sure hope not because I really like Dustin Hopkins following last season. But Hopkins has dealt with injuries throughout his NFL career. I feel like you can blindly assume most kickers never miss a game, and that's a good assumption to make. Not with, the, uh, with Dustin Hopkins. So will he get into a game this year? It's possible. Uh, Dustin Hopkins hasn't played a full season, I think, in a few seasons. He has missed some time lately, so... I would, I would not rule it out as Joshua Miller reps his Cade York uh, jersey in his profile picture. Jackson Finley, week one in Brazil. We're filming this right now, Tuesday afternoon, and all signs are pointing to the Green Bay Packers going down to Sao Paulo to, Sao Paulo to play the Philadelphia Eagles. I would not put your uh, money on that. Brody, what happens to Elijah Moore if the Browns draft Troy Franklin? I would say Elijah Moore is probably not coming back after this season. And maybe the Browns find a way to re-sign him. You know, if he plays really, really well, then I'm sure Cleveland will love to keep him. But he may get a bigger contract in free agency elsewhere. So we'll have to wait and see. Um, what happens to him, though, I think Troy Franklin will compete, obviously, like the rest of them, for some snaps. And I think Elijah Moore's got a good footing and a good grasp on his uh, spot in the depth chart. And I think the Browns and Berea, you know, the decision makers, think very highly of Elijah Moore. So... For that reason, I just don't think the Browns are going wide receiver at pick 54. They've traded for all three of their star wide receivers, right? All three top guys, Cooper, Judy, and Moore. Don't you think after Andrew Barry traded for them, he wants to see them play? That's why I'm kind of fading receiver in round two. Tim Green, if Deshaun Watson doesn't go well this season, how would you grade the trade to get him? Let's say Deshaun Watson plays all 17 games and the Browns go 7-10. and 10. Miss the playoffs. I'd say it'd be a, an F trade. I, I don't really know how you could say otherwise, right? If you want to argue with me, you're probably saying it's a D. Is that what we want to argue over, an F or a D? I mean, I sure hope that doesn't happen. I um, hope Sean Watson the Browns play very well, and I'm optimistic. But if it does not go well this year, um, I think Deshaun Watson's still coming back in 2025, yeah? But there's probably going to be a Rookie quarterback coming in earlier in the draft to Cleveland. Josh, next one up. Um, Jatavion Sanders could be a solid get as a tight end two with tight end one upside if Njoku moves on in a couple of years or gets hurt. So it's funny you mentioned that, Josh, because when I first saw Sanders visit the Browns, I was like, hey, that's not a bad idea, right? If uh, Njoku gets hurt, he's got injury history. And then I kind of like threw some water on my face. Sure, Njoku has run into injuries in his career, but outside of like that 20, I want to say is it 18 to or 19 to 20, that like two year stretch where that wrist injury knocked him out for much of the season, like he's played pretty much every single game every single season. I mean, he burned half his face off last year and missed one game as a result. So Njoku has always been such a Cleveland guy through and through, not from the area, from New Jersey, went to Miami, then drafted by the Browns. and. I mean, he goes to, to war to defend the city of Cleveland. So I think he wants to be a Brown for the rest of his career. So I don't think the idea of drafting Sanders is, 
a replacement for Njoku. I think it's simply a approach as to what you want to do offensively, and that is more two tight end sets. So I wouldn't view Sanders as them thinking a few years down the road to move on from the Chiefs. All right, let's uh, get into pick a card mode with producer Trace today. What are you thinking, producer Trace? Let me do the Jack of Hearts. Jack of Hearts? Yeah. I'm going to do the Five of Diamonds. I like it. Just feeling it. You know what I mean? I like it. Just feeling it. Not too far off. Queen of Spades. Oh. Queen of Spades. All right. That will do it for us on our mailbag today. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. For those of you that watched and asked questions during our live show and coming out with us next Tuesday, 5 p.m. Eastern, so you can get your question on screen during the mailbag. All right, biggest super chat. We'll get to pick a future show topic. Right now, it's belonging to Jacob Kistner. Jacob Kistner, the $5 super chat. Someone had to break a tie, and someone has to try to pick up that Jeremy Stallman energy. And because mystery mail can make someone's month, thanks, Jeremy and PD. Uh, Jacob, very happy to hear the uh, mystery mail finally arrived. I do try to, you know, Give back to those of you that give so much to the channel. So, Jacob, longtime viewer, you got a little, uh, you know, something uh, special in the mail today, yesterday. I'm not really sure when, but I'm very happy. I hope you really like it, Jacob. Uh, I think you're very well deserving of it. So, uh, do my best here to try and, uh, you know, give back to those of you that just spend so much time and energy and devotion to this channel. It's the least I can do. Brody with a question. Something, uh, Producer Trace wants to maybe get involved with. Hot take. Nick Chubb will win comeback player of the year and lead the league in rushing yards. That's a hot take. I like it because it is a hot take. It's a good, like, it's a good hot take because, you know, it's got some legs to that possibility, and I would love to see that happen. Yeah, that would be a lot of fun if Nick Chubb comes back and wins uh, comeback play, back-to-back comeback player of the year for the Browns. Yeah, I just wanted to see, uh, see what your thoughts were on this one. I, That's I, why I popped it up. I, I mean, the leading in the league in rushing part – is a tough thing to accomplish if you don't play. At least, like, you can miss one game and lead the league in anything, probably. I think at most, if you miss two games, that's where it starts getting kind of... So, will Chubb be back after the first week or two? Or could he likely miss the first, like, four weeks? That happens, it'd be a very tough uphill battle for him, just from a, a snapper you know, perspective to everyone else. But, Brody, I like where your head's at, dude. All right, Jacob Kistner, $5 Super Chat. That is the number to beat. Can anyone else steal it from the man, the myth, the legend, Jacob Kistner? We'll get like a two-minute timer. Two-minute timer. We'll get a two-minute timer on screen. And if no one else sends in a Super Chat bigger than $5, can't be five, got to be bigger than five. Otherwise, we're back to where we started with another tie, un-American. Um, it'll be Kistner bringing home the gold. And then Jacob let me know what kind of show topic you would like to discuss on the Cleveland Browns report. Just keep it in the neighborhood of the Browns and the NFL, um, and we can, you know, go from there. So, two-dollar timer, two-dollar timer, two-minute timer, uh, starting in now. Almost. We'll get me behind it in just a second. There it is, and they're off. Okay, starting over. In the meantime, I see Christopher Stofira. Good to see you, man, in the chat right now. Uh, top 10 wizard. Cool guys here, of course. Josh, if a CB slides down the draft board unexpectedly, chances AB drafts him and then trades Greg Newsom for additional draft capital. I think he wouldn't trade Newsom. I think he would just keep... Ooh, Tim Green with a $10 super chat. Let's go, Tim. Uh, Josh, I don't think he would trade Newsom. I think he would just have four really good corners. And then that takes a lot of pressure off of the Browns to have to pay Greg Newsom, whereas they've got a, another corner already in the wings when Greg Newsom's rookie contract expires. Uh, Tim Green, though, $10 super chat. Let's go, Tim. Timer resets. Two minutes. Can anyone top 10, though? Tim, as things stand right now, you're in the driver's seat. Let me know if in a minute 40 seconds no one else has a bigger super chat, which show topic you would love to discuss. I've got the green family Christmas card on my desk still. Oh, really? I'm a bit, I wouldn't say a hoarder. I, I, I'm uh, on the way to being a hoarder. Well, I do throw things out, 
But if I can just give a little bit of a sentimental attachment to it, I'm the same way. It takes a lot. I still I don't have... throw any handwritten letter out ever. It all goes into a big like a uh, folder I have at home. I have a. Uh, I still have your postcard that you sent to our desk about a year and a half ago. <laughs> London or, or from London. I think. Yeah. It was about a year ago. Oh, it was like last uh, last February. Yeah, so a little mm-hmm. bit of time. So a while back, I still have that on my desk. I like that. I'll never get rid of it. Yeah. I got to go on another I, trip. Yeah. Write, write more postcards. Yes. Let's go. I got to beef with the post office, actually. Oh, no. Can I? All right. It, story time. A little bit of story time. I write a lot of letters. Um, I write a birthday letter to all my friends. Mm. Okay. It was one yesterday. His letter I put in the mail two weeks ago. He still hasn't gotten it. That's not the beef, though. The beef is I sent a letter to my friend whose birthday was at the end of March, March 28th. And I got it returned to sender yesterday. It's like, you know, 10 or so days later. And usually they, well, they always put like a sticker on for the mm-hmm. reason why. And most times the sticker is code for you put the wrong address down. Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, this one was not that. The reasoning given on this one was that the recipient could not receive it. What? It's a residential mailbox. And they did that for my grandma's letter too. Did they move? And my, no, no. And my grandma... Checks the mail every day. So it would be like if your mailbox was full oh, and they couldn't they deliver couldn't it. put it in there. Yeah. But that was, or if the mailbox was like knocked off, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. But that wasn't the case. So I have no good reason. So I am going to wake up Saturday morning and go to the post office because the simple solution is to simply make a new envelope, put a new stamp on it, and there resend it again. But I'm not going to waste another stamp. No. I, I, they keep raising stamp prices. Absolutely. So I'm going to go, you know, crack some skulls at the USPS. Hey, bring it. Mm-hmm. Bring okay. It. Tim Green, today's winner. Um, Tim, please let me know what show topic you'd like to do. You don't have to have like a full show plan. It can be a, a as little as like a third of a show to a quarter. If it's just like one segment to talk about. That's perfectly fine as well. You know, whatever, however much or however little you want to do, by all means, feel free to take the reins on this. And then, you know, I'll do my job and actually do the work part. For for the sake of, like, helping you come up with an idea, it could be quarterback trade ideas. It could be linebacker draft targets. It could be best offensive line free agents. You know, something like that just to kind of maybe give you some inspiration. Yep. Tim Green. Cleveland Browns history would be Ooh. nice. Okay, we can work That'll with that. That would be a cool one. You are you thinking like just? You could do like the top like five. A history of the Cleveland Browns, or best like ranking the best Browns draft picks over the last twenty years. Could do ranking the best Browns quarterbacks. Yeah, that might be an well, interesting uh, one because there's not a lot of great ones. Very depressing one. Um, Tim, l- let me know. But you, that's a very good starting point. If you want, I can kind of get more specific from there. Or if you've got something more specific you have in mind, that works as well. Uh, Let me know what you're thinking. So we're going to sign off, though. Tim, you know how to get in contact with me. So let me know what you're thinking. Enjoy the rest of your day, everyone. Thank you guys so much for tuning in, as always. Tuesday afternoons are always a uh, highlight to end the day for me. So I enjoy hanging out with you guys, talking brownies, talking football. Um, We'll see you guys next week. Go Brownies.